you were driving from Washington State to Idaho. As we said, it was a very foggy morning when suddenly you saw a truck jackknifed on the highway in front of you. Then what happened? Oh, man. I, I think I just had to gasp. I mean, wh when you're going downhill, I, as soon as he jackknifed, I shifted down and pushed my brakes. But being on black ice, th there's no chance. I mean, what can you do? And so I tried to somewhat steer to the right side of the road, and I ended up hitting the trailer uh, right at the back corner. So it smashed my front end in. And when I hit, it shut my pickup off, so, off, so I was pretty much helpless there. And as soon as that came to stop, I looked out my passenger window on my right side and saw semi-lights coming towards me. <gasps> and when you saw those lights coming towards you, did you say a prayer? Are you a man of faith? Are you a man of faith now? Did some? What did you do? Because I always wonder about that. When you see the, this flash before your eyes, what is your thought? Uh, I mean, the first thing is, is hopefully you're okay, and then you look over and you see the lights, and I turn right back, close my eyes, and said a prayer that I'd be safe, and, and I do believe, and I, I'm, I'm very firm in that, and I just held onto the wheel as tight as I could, tucked my head, and just kept praying the whole time. Caleb. And, I mean, after he hit, I just hoped, hoped that it would be over with soon. All right, so Caleb, first of all, tell us what kind of truck it is, uh, <laughs> and right. what happened that compressed it, it, it like that? Like, uh -huh. what were you able to figure out about what was happening to the truck to accordion it like that? Okay, and so it's a Chevy Silverado. It's an extended cab, which is actually important. Yep. It's a 1500. Um, so when I hit, it sent me broadside facing my passenger side towards oncoming traffic. When the second truck hit my back end, it spun my bed underneath the first trailer that I hit and continued to swing my nose around and, and I guess put my nose underneath the second trailer. And as that trailer came around, it just kind of pushed me down and further into that, that small V that I, where you can actually see both of the, the trailers within arm's reach on both sides. And so, I mean, if, if there would have been even a foot for, if that would have pushed me even more of a foot, it, would have, it probably would have crushed me. <gasps> Caleb, how long were you trapped in that spot? Before I was able to get out was only about a half hour, which was good because time does not fly when you're in situations like that. It was very slow waiting to get out. Well, I know first responders, when they come on a scene like this, their first concern is if we pull this apart, is the guy going to come apart? And the fact that you came out of this, I mean, did you walk out of there uh -huh. un under your own power? Yes, very much so. My so, word. now the million zillion dollar question. Why did you make it out uh -huh. of there, Caleb? You know that that's not what's supposed to happen. So, who do you thank? What do you thank? And what do you think it means for you and what your life is about? I thank my Heavenly Father. I, I don't have the answers. And if I had the answers, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I, I just, when, when things like that happen, and what I've kind of come to realize is that it is a miracle and that I need to take that into my life and remember it, and now I need to kind of figure out who, who I need to be in this life and what things I need to accomplish because how many people don't get a chance, a second chance at, at escaping a situation like that?